Star Wars. We are a Star War. We are a Star War. Isn't that cool? Hello there. My name is Corey, and I am a Star War. Oh, well, my name is also Corey, and I am a Star War. And my name is not Corey. It's Jim, and I am a Star War. And, and we, we are a Star War. War. Today, we're going to start talking about the newest Disney Plus series, Andor. They say Andor. Sometimes they say Andor. Or am I wrong? I think it's Andor. The, but the, the, the last dude that he just met. Um, oh, Stellan Skarsgård. Skarsgård. He was, Everything he says is like, is Andor. Andor. Yeah. Yes. Corey Martin is off mic again. He said Andor. If Stellan Skarsgård. Hey, Corey. <laughs> You're on, Kari Martin, you're off at Mike. No, why did he go Irish? He's not Irish. Mm-hmm. Hey, you kind of sounded like him, though. I got Ender. I got Ender. that down. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I liked it. I liked it. So we're talking about episodes one through three. And uh, full disclosure, uh, we've discussed this before, uh, before we started recording, and we were all probably a little bit intoxicated when we no. watched episodes one and two. No. Were we a lot intoxicated? Yes. <laughs> when we watched episodes one and two. So some of that may blur together, but I was stone cold sober last night. I watched episode three finally. <laughs> so uh, some of this may all run together. Then listen, if you want cold hard facts about the Star War, you're listening to the wrong podcast. Remember, this is three buttholes talking about Star Wars. It's just three buttholes talking yeah. about Star Wars. We, we're just trying to have a good time, and we want y'all to have a good time. So, I mean, let's get into it. So far, I'm going to say episodes one and two were a slow burn for me. I enjoyed them. I liked them a lot. I liked that it was getting away from the pew, 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 and the pew, pew. But there was good, like, it, <laughs> what it reminded me of was, like, Captain America Winter Soldier. Like, it was a good-ass, just, like, spy, espionage kind of shit happening, right? Right. Leading up to some shit popping off. Does Don't- that seem accurate? Yes. I want to kind of back up a little bit going into the show before you even watched it. Like, yeah. what did we expect? Because I, that, I think that's worth chatting about just for a second because... Before we dive in. Yeah. Rogue One is one of my favorite Star Wars movies. I, watched, I rewatched Rogue One last night, too. Before and, wow. I rewatched these three. I, I already have two people that want to jump on our episode about when we do get to Rogue One. Two people have already been like, "Yo, I gotta get in on because it's one. the one of the, it's the it's best. One of the it's best. so it's good. It's one of the best. I mean, it's it's got its issues, but they're not story issues. Um, I'm not a fan of the CGI deep fake Leia in the end, but that's okay. I still loved the movie, and it is the tone of that movie is incredible. And so, my expectations for the series, to be honest with you, until they drop that last trailer was you know it was looking forward to it but i wasn't like oh my god i can't wait to see it and then when that trailer came out i was like oh boy this looks great yeah. so you know yeah what, what do you have to say about it oh yeah i agree um going back into the like the rogue one headspace which is so different from everything that comes before it and becomes after it because there's no jedis there's no lightsabers so I expect we'll see the same in the show. We won't see any Jedis. We won't see any lightsabers. We might see some Force-sensitive people, because those were in Rogue One. Right. But no Jedis. Um, And then, like, of the people that were in that, I wonder how many of them we'll get again. And I know that some of them, Saw Gerrera was in the trailer, I think. But, like, will there be, like, a Galen or so connection? That would be cool. Um I think I kind of spoiled this on accident when I was looking at the cast list yesterday, but uh, I think K2SO is going to be back on. So uh, the cast, if you're looking on IMDb, IMDb's got the cast list for both seasons, I think. And so I thought Alan Tudyk wasn't, was confirmed for the second season. Oh, okay. So, so he, his name would, would, if if they do have the cast list for both seasons, or they started the IMDb for both seasons, then his name would show up in there. But I mean, I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Uh, what's the no. name of the little droid that's in the, in this first series? B. They just call him B. I don't remember. His that. name is like B two emo. <laughs> or 
B- I'm serious. That's what it says on the uh, uh, okay. closed, closed captioning. It's B2. Is it listen to My Chemical Romance? B2 Emo. But I think it might be B2MO, like the letters. Hmm? M-O. B2MO. I'm going down, 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 right. down, down, down. But it's spelled like Patrick Stump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is, but that's yes, you do. Who is that? Is the bass player from Fall Out Boy? Bass player. He wrote all the he wrote all the songs. Pete something. What did I say? Patrick Stump. Oh, that's the lead singer of. (laughs) We've gone off (laughs) target. Fall Out Boy. Stay on target. Stay on target. Um. Corey is the only one that has notes. I had notes I last notes. time, and I don't have well, shit. Well, he's reviewing his notes. I just want to add that B2 Limp Biscuit is, um, mm-hmm. reminds me of Wally. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I like his little stutter. The he's way got that a he Wally can, vibe He kind of hides yeah. inside himself. It's kind of yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. They just call him B for short. And I they call that. him B, yeah. Um, B wins. And the big like Cassian moment from Rogue One is when he they're deciding if they're going to fight or not and he's yelling at Jen and he's like I can't do this just because you all of a sudden decide you want to join the and he says I've been in this fight since I was six years old mm. so now I'm like now okay now I want to see it so then in the show yeah we'll get into how young we are going to go back in his life it's kind of hard to tell how young that kid is but anyway He's a That's older what I was. Than six. Seems a little older than six. Yeah. yeah. But also, it seems like a bunch of stuff has happened to them already. They've already lost all the adults on right, that planet right, right, somehow right, right. in a mining accident or something. But no, because that guy in the third episode, he's like, "Yeah, what if they hang me in the square? Isn't that what they did to your father?" Oh shit! Yeah. Ooh. So, Cassian's dad was hanging somewhere. I think we'll get we'll get That's more flashbacks. That's true because that that then, right? the 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 young kid's storyline has a Lord of the Flies vibe to it. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, there had to be adults at some point. This is obviously like that, uh, ship crashing, Mm -hmm. I guess draws attention. And it's probably what does the planet in, in the end. Like, it looks like the empire is going to come in and do what they do and destroy it and make it inhabitable. Like they have done to other planets. Turn it into a junkyard. Right. Maybe put some waffle houses. (laughs) Yeah. What? Imperial Waffle Houses. Scattered, smothered. I liked it. The Vatered. Vatered. <laughs> Vatered. <laughs> so, episode one. I have questions. Because That's when they're like, burnt to a crisp. Oh, no. <laughs> God damn it. Baroud. <laughs> 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 I like the um, Baroud special. <laughs> oh, no. So, <laughs> too far. Too far. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> So, episode one, then, Corey has two lines of notes. Get, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's read these. Yes, let's read, let's read these yeah. notes we'll out loud. The episode. Well, epi- the, the, my first note is encapsulates the first, like, 15 minutes, and it is Whorehouse. We're looking for a girl from Canary, looking for his sister, like Fox Mulder. Very, Fox, Fox Fo- Mulder Fox was looking, looking for, for his sister. That's true. That's yeah. true. So they okay. He and Bix, this girl, are f- friends. That's not his sister, correct? Am I wrong? Right. That's not his sister. That's not his sister. That's just a friend. Sister is lost. Right. Yes. He's and I looking thought. For his and I thought that the gal, the the young, the and during the flashback sequence, the the the, the girl that looks like she's kind of the leader of the Lord of the Flies group, mm-hmm. kind of jumping forward into episode three. When I thought she was the sister. Like I, I mean, and there was there was nothing about it that told us that she was or wasn't. I just made that assumption, and then when she got killed, I was like, "Well, I guess she's not the sister." Yeah, I thought it was the little one that kept yeah. following him and calling him Cassie. Casa. Casa. Mm-hmm. He drank too much. <laughs> <laughs> what does your other note say? Uh, my other note says warthog pisses on a droid. So that's episode one. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I'm just like proud of disney that they were like hey this rogue one is a little more you know rough and tumble here we're gonna go to a whorehouse there was a your mom joke in there we're gonna or see was that episode two? the stream of urine coming from this animal mm-hmm. and hitting this droid i thought that was pretty fun which we will then try to sell merchandising of i, I kept seeing <laughs> it's gonna be a new ride said like 
I kept seeing things that said like this is the most adult Star Wars yet. And I'm like, okay, was it the, your mom joke or the pissing warthog? Because I, I mean, or- I don't know about episode. I mean, episode three. I think that's the first time we've ever seen the bedroom where people are actually about to be intimate. Yeah. I mean, has there ever? I can't remember a scene in anything from Star Wars no, where. No, no, no. Where it was, where you know, somebody was shit face drunk and then you know, ready to get it on. Yeah, the closest we've got is uh, Annie and Padme frolicking in the fields, in the fields of episode <laughs> of <Naboo>. two, <laughs> which mm-hmm. none of us want to revisit. No, no, not yet. So, no, episode Attack one. of the Clones is only forty five minutes long. <laughs> episode when one, I watch it, episode one is just like a. Hey, here's what's going down. We're gonna we're gonna reintroduce you to to Cassian, and uh, set up some other characters that may or may not stick around much longer. Right? Yeah. They also kind of in the exact same way that they did it in Rogue One. When you first meet him, he's meeting that spy. The spy gives him the information, and then two stormtroopers walk up. And he kills them both, and the guy's like, I can't escape, so he kills him too. Mm-hmm. So you're immediately like, oh, whose side is this guy on? He's kind of bad. Mm-hmm. And so then this one starts off again. It's like he's in a whorehouse, and the two guys start bullying him, and he kills him. He kills one kind of on accident this time, though. And yeah. then, But then once he notices he killed him, he does heat and kills the other guy too. Got to get you too, son. Yeah. So it's almost like we're seeing... Like, maybe that was the first person he's ever killed. I have a feeling it wasn't. Yeah. He was really good in that fight. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, <clears throat> and they also do a good job throughout of setting him up with making deals with different people. And, hey, I'm going to go to my friend. <laughs> right, right, right. And this is my alibi. My, my, my favorite my favorite uh, beat, I think it was in the second episode, was one is one buddy's like, you know, hey, where's where's my investment? And then, like, there's the giant lizard-looking goon standing behind him, and Cassian's like, "Really, you're here? Why are you here? I don't know. He just told me to he told stand, me to stand here. here. Told me to stand here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It you know, was we awesome. can we can be dark, heavy, edgy Star Wars, but we still got to have some fun. And yeah. I thought that was really well done. <laughs> so, do, I'm trying to think of what else happened. We did get. Did we really get any hints of anything else in episode one, or do you want to jump into episode two? I think we should probably just talk about all three of these together, because that's how we, you and I, remembered them. Yeah, but Corey does have an outline here, so slow down. What, what is uh, <laughs> what's going on? What's going on in episode two, Corey? Um, episode two, I wrote down back on Canali, no translations. They don't tell us what the kids are saying the yeah. whole time. Kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You could kind of infer, or is infer the right? You yeah. could kind of figure out what they're talking about. Um, but it was a it was a choice because Jamie, my wife, pointed that out. She's like, they're not putting the translations, and they yeah. usually do that for Star the Star War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was an interesting choice. Why do you think that is? I would guess that maybe it was a way to. Um, isolate the children from the audience like that side of the story like we don't we don't they're controlling what we find out about young cassie in that way you know because really you're you're going to focus more on the body language and the performances and you know the the general movements of what the kids were doing seemed fairly straightforward there's a ship that just crashed on the planet we're going to suit up and go check it out right and so but all those nuances in between the looks and the that was cool and they wanted you to look at the kids, I think. Yeah. I have a hot take. I think... Somebody forgot to do the I subtitles. Th- <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that um, a bunch of kids were hired to be in Star Wars, and then they all got together, and they're like, you know what happens to kids who are in Star Wars? We're never going to work again. So then they went to him, and they were like, look, you can't use our voices. <laughs> Because you know what the Star Wars fan base does to children who try to be in Star Wars. It destroys them. That is true. So they were like, look, we're going to just, you just do your wah, 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 wah. And we'll just leave it at that. Just Charlie Brown that shit. Yeah. So the kids just made it up. So no one is going to be like, that kid, I don't believe. Because the one you don't that, even know what they're saying. The one that was now speaking. Now this is pod racing. The exactly. one that was speaking Goonie Goo Goo. Yeah. 
Yeah, no one's doubting that. Yeah. They're like, that's the best Goonie Goo Goo I ever heard. It was pretty badass, though, when they get all, like, war paint and shit. Mm-hmm. I liked it, that. That was good stuff. It was a little creepy, though, when he'd be going and start poking people. They start like, ooh, is he alive? Mm-hmm. With the yellow face or whatever from the gas. Yeah, so what was up with that? I don't know, man. Well, I mean, were they? was that like the, the, the species, like the race of the people on the ship? I or, thought it was from the gas. Or was it like, were they jaundiced from whatever happened on the ship? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I could be wrong. I have no I have no opinion. I didn't notice that their faces were yellow. They were yellow than a motherfucker. Oh. Mm-hmm. Poor things. They're um from the planet Lemonhead. <laughs> yes. They're lemonheads. Yeah, they something I I just thought it was from the gas. That Makes they sense. died from gas. Uh I've almost died from gas. Your gas. Yeah, yeah, I'll be farting and I don't appreciate it. All right, so next line from episode 2. Asks homie for an alibi. That's his homie in the field. Yeah. Who made the your mom joke. That's right. Who also, I can't understand their job and why they leave their gloves every They're night. not carving uh, desert tuna, though. Right. That, yeah. What are they doing? Well, something <clears throat> with gloves. There was something with the gloves. It and seems the re- like they're all just like... The recap that um, I watched said that there was... There was one one clip that showed a bunch of gloves on the wall, and there was one plate where the gloves were missing. And then when you cut to an interior scene um, inside of Marva and Andor's home, there's a pair of gloves hanging there. And they're like, does she have the gloves? Did she used to work there? And then she's like, nah, fuck this. I ain't down with y'all. Well, didn't they say something to him about, like, when are you coming back to work or something like that? Maybe. Yeah, like, I mean, are they just moving boxes? I think they're out there pulling stuff off of. They're like scrapping. Yeah. So stuff. They're, they're they're just like sorting. They, oh, they, they work at the recycling center. Yeah, they're like pulling, So they're just they're sorting yeah. the recycling. Like this glass. This is number two yeah. plastic. Got it. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's you can ticket. smell it. <laughs> That's the ticket. Um, and then also company man because I couldn't find his name, and then when I did find it, I didn't understand it. But he tailored his own uniform. Um, the guy who's like the up and coming. He looks like be he's a always guy. trying to cry. Yeah, but I loved him. <laughs> it's true. Like he's so Weasley. I love that guy. He was. It's a really good character. I mean, I mean, he's a the character is an asshole, but he's an interesting. The actor is killing it on that one. Yeah, and that whole sequence, and that was that's that's the first episode, right? The conversation between him and the. Um, and his about superior the two, about the two men found that was dead. a really well written sequence mm-hmm. right that, I, I watched it twice and I'm like this the way they're just parlaying back and forth is really really impressive they're telling us everything we need to know and, but not doing it just with exposition oh you're talking about when the superior was trying to get him to cover it up yes and it'd be like no that didn't that, that shit ain't happened right he died in a fight yeah but then the next the next episode two is the one where He's talking to the other dude, the pudgy fella. Pudgy fella is all like, "Yeah, I seen some shit, and and this we're gonna fix this shit." And they go, they they try to get fired up. Did you see um, Chernobyl on HBO? No, but I, the recap that I watched on YouTube was like, this dude was in Chernobyl because that dude had a big, like not a very big part, but he had a good part, and he was awesome in that show. So I was like, "Oh, I love they him." Said, they said there was a couple of people from Chernobyl in this, this mm-hmm. show. But it also, I think I wrote that down because I was also thinking about how, like, we are even a further step removed from the mainstream Star Wars here because, like, the it's a corporate security because company. yeah, we're yeah. not even fighting the Empire, right? And him, we're fighting the, 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 the little jab about him tailoring his uniform was to make it look more imperial, right? Right? He's playing it being Empire, yeah. yes, which is fascinating He's because. Not- because like uh, Rogue One didn't have lightsabers, this show isn't gonna have like Tie Fighters. This is gonna be like I mean, there's spaceships, but there's like I got none little, of the stuff. I got there. a little ADD real quick. I want to go back to the opening sequence of Episode One and just comment on how kind of creepy the fucking red light district was. The the oh the people that, in balloon and yeah, bubbles and stuff. Yeah, that was a little disturbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many it's, whorehouses have been in Star Wars? 
the best little whorehouse in <laughs> BYB <laughs> <laughs> Promex or whatever it was called. What about um, wasn't there? I mean, there was one in, in the Boba Fett show, right? I mean, it was implied that that was kind of a Western saloon where there was gambling in the front, mm. and you could get your helmet uh, polished in the back. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> that was their line, not mine. That is true. That is true. They offered it <laughs> when you walked talking, in. Yes. Fucking in Boba Fett, right? <laughs> but but Andor is like, no, we're in, we're going to open up in the red light district in Amsterdam. Yeah, with with the you know the carnival show and the you know see see what you can eat as you're walking down the alleyway. I'm like, this is a little creepy. <laughs> I like it. So, what else you got on on two? Uh, that was all I have on two, and that also might all be from one <laughs> because I didn't labeled which parts were two. Look, it's been a long. I got week. a little blurry in the middle. We've all worked, uh, and this is just episode hours. two. So, for the two of you yeah. listening to this, you know, we're still sorting it out. Yeah, we'll get better. So or three, maybe not. <laughs> three, uh, listen, I, I I said from the beginning, if you want. Tight, fucking serious ass Star War. This is not for you. That's our other podcast. <laughs> That's our tight, other. serious ass Star Wars. Yeah, that is available with KK and J. On <laughs> his uh, name is spelled with a C. It is. <laughs> okay, so in Episode Three is where shit really starts popping off, right? It's like you get the sense of action and the sense of danger. And they start weaving the two stories together with Marva and Cassian's backstory, and you you, you know you kind of feel like okay he's 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 about to dip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get that feeling, and then uh, Sarsgaard shows up. Luthen. Luthen shows up, and he does, they they're feeling each other out. That scene's tense. There's shit popping off outside. They don't know what's happening, and then Luthen's like, "Yeah, bro." I don't Put some fucking detonators out there. We we're going we're going down with a fight if we go down, and so that's when you feel like Andor's like, okay, this dude's serious. Maybe I should hook up with him, and we really get to fighting the Empire. Cassian also really didn't have much of a choice. That is true. Yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 it was either it was there. either go with with Bluefin or keep running from. Imperial wannabe. Yeah, because whatever Han Solo wannabe hustling stuff he's trying to do, it's obviously not working out. And he's running out of friends that'll give him alibis and stuff. Right. And people that'll cover for well, him. Well, and I mean, and now that his face is out there, it's out there. Right. I mean, he can't. Well, we'll see what they do. But, can't I get mean, a new face. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. So Luthen is like the switcheroo because we think. You think he's after this box? He's coming to buy, yeah, stolen but he ain't goods. After the box. But he's actually like a Moneyball talent scout mm-hmm. yeah. for the he's rebellion. After, he's after Cassian. I, I yeah. do think though that Cassian's ability to get the box is what put him on dude's radar in the first place. So yeah, he doesn't. You know, it's Cassian that he wants, and not the whatever that thing was. But the fact that Cassian was able to get it is why he was like, "Huh, this guy's got some skills. This guy's got." potential yeah for sure and then that whole scene where the guards start coming after him and the fucking cables start pulling the things up and everything's exploding and dropping all around him I think you said that was uh, called popping off it's called popping off that's when shit popped off that was pretty tight I said tight (laughs) so the dude who plays the imperial guy is this him the one that looks like he's always trying to cry that's him that's him that is him so we were on imdb ladies and gentlemen he looks a lot like ramsey so uh, the from game of thrones that's who he reminds me of uh so this is kyle solar or solar not quite sure how you pronounce his last name cyril karn (laughs) It's a great name. Yeah, that's the name. name? Yeah, that's, that's the name his, I couldn't write. That's the character out. name, the Cyril Karn, and you know, he's really well written and really. He looks well more like performed. he could be named Trevor. He <laughs> looks a bit like a like a Todd, maybe. Yeah, um, Trevor's good, but like his, you know, he he basically like 
before they landed on the planet, like when he's rallying up, not even when he's rallying up troops, because he didn't do that well. Once he convinced that one other guy, to to the dude from Chernobyl, to 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 yeah, let's go do this. I think he was like, fuck, I caught the car and I don't know what to do with it now. It yeah. really got away from him. And I thought that was interesting because... He was in over his head for sure. But yeah. he was trying so hard in the previous episode to like, and, and succeeding at lording over all of the other corporate guys but and he did, getting them to... He tried to give that speech and that speech was no, some bullshit. But that's what I'm saying. Like, when he was in the room in the, in the second episode and he was telling the one comms guy to like, no, do your job or I don't care about approving overtime, he was assertive. Right, and then and then and and his assertion paid off, and he was able to 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 actually find the face and name of the guy who killed the the two employees. Right, but like the idea of going down there and doing something about it scared the shit out of him. He and reminded I thought me that was awesome. He reminded me a lot of the guy who's like in charge of the mission in Aliens. Oh, Burke. Who's like, they're like, how many missions you done? He's like, oh, not, not Burke. Uh, Burke was 19. Uh, uh, I don't know. No, it, it was, was like 19 how, simulated. How many, how many combat drops have you done? Yeah. Right. How many drops is this for you? Like, you know, 105. How yeah. many <laughs> combat drops? Two, including this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like young guy in that over his head. Lieutenant. Yeah. He reminded me of that. I like that character, though. Like, mm-hmm. No, he's he's. So far, he's one of the more interesting characters. And he should be. I mean, he's clearly pivotal because he's the one that's, at least within these first three episodes, he's the one that's creating, uh, he's the one that's removing options from Cassian's whatever the hell it is he's trying to do, right? Like the fact that Cassian is trying to find his sister and and Stellan Skarsgård's character is like, not nah, come fight the Empire. Those are two different things. Right, those are two completely different goals, and <clears throat> one of the things that I was curious about this episode and I thought about it when you were recapping Rogue One, like, and Cassian's arc in Rogue One goes from being blood, like just ruthless, just ruthless, just whatever it takes to get the job done. And and it's within that movie that his arc really manifests, and and you know he's willing to play it straight and sacrifice himself, and like you know do the thing that needs to be done. What's his arc going to be in this show? Right? Well, see, that's why because it starts off him doing the exact same thing. Only but that's why in, I, I I that's why I felt like the first guy was an accident and kind of pushed him into killing the second one. Like I feel you. like. I feel like that's the arc is him going from like, God, I got to kill people to, all right, I got to kill people. Right. Right. Like, Cause, cause in, in the movie, it doesn't he's got to, he's got to not kill Galen or so. Right? right. Like that was the thing was like him deciding that I don't want to do this. Right. Okay. So yes. What else you got on three? Uh, not a damn thing. Except think- that, except that Luthen knew that Cassian's dad was executed. So now we got to wonder how you know does Luthen is ex like, Empire or or is involved? I mean, he this guy's he's got the the key codes and the secret the passes. And he's, he's on the inside. He's got to be. Yeah. If he's not currently, he was. And and really, all right. Help me out here. Time wise, how old is the Empire right here? So how many? I I don't know the answer here. Like how? Just guess how many years after? Well, this Rogue is one, five I mean, years after, before the episode one. Okay. So episode one was twenty years after give or take Sith. Twenty years after Sith. So this is so this is so the Empire's fifteen been, years. So the Empire's been in business for a decade and a half. Yeah. Right. Lufin was doing some heavy duty lifting before there was an Empire. Right. Where did he come from? I want to know that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what do we have? Ten episodes of this show, or twelve, 12? for season one? Yeah. Oh, damn! So, we definitely see Saw Gerrera. Like, do we do we do we establish? Do we see anybody else? Did you did you look at the, all the credits? I thought Mon Moth. No. I thought Mon Moth was going to be in this. Yeah, also. I've seen her in the and then because she's like a senator or something, yep. right? Yep. And, and she then, says, "If I do this, they don't and, know what I'm really trying to do." And have you guys do. seen the bit about it was you know somebody did like a super super frame by frame 
uh, like dissection of the first trailer or the big trailer, and there's a young woman named like Clea. I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Her name is Clea, and she's like, there's whatever line that she says in in the in the trailer. It's it's in the subtitle uh. in the caption. And it's very Leia esque in inspiration. So well, it wouldn't make sense. And if you remember in she's Rebels, a senator, right? if you remember in Rebels, no, Leia wouldn't be ambassador. She's an ambassador, Ambas- but yeah. she was Fulcrum. She was one of the Fulcrum. She That's was right. she was doing it her way, right? She was in the background running things and getting things going. I think we might see a teenage Leia. I think, at least that's what the implication was, and could be completely wrong. And and but I wouldn't mind it. I mean that no, kind of follows in line with what we all loved about the the uh, Obi Wan series, you know, seeing a side of Leia that we never thought we were going to see, but by God, it was great to get it. Yeah. So it'd be cool to see to see her. I wouldn't be mad at it. Mm-mm. I mean, because this has taken place during the same time as Rebels, right? I mean, this is Solo would also be happening around around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Solo was probably a few years before this because Solo was pretty fucking young. So the, but so Solo was because this leads up. Yeah. Well, this is a, obviously a little bit before Rogue One, but Rogue One obviously leads up right to the very mm-hmm. moment that A New Hope starts. Right. Right. So but Solo's show got to age a little more. Yeah. This show started off saying this is five years BBY. But what year is Rogue One BBY? Zero. It's like you said. It's two days before. Gotcha. So this is five years before Rogue One. Oh, okay. Luke wasn't 20, though, in A New Hope. No, he was 19. What's the question? <laughs> He's got to get some shit at the Tashi station. He was 19. Yeah. That's a whiny fucking 19-year-old. But I was going to go Luke, get some I thought he was like 17. Luke was a little bitch in the beginning of that. Nah. I mean, he farmed like sand. You no, know he was. He <laughs> ate sand. <laughs> he ate sand? He ate sand. When there was no fowl to be found, we ate crawdad. And when, when there was, was no, no crawdad, crawdad we, we ate sand. sand. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So let's give some final thoughts. And this will be a short episode because we're going to get, we'll probably touch on some of these a little bit more as we recap four, five, and six, because some of that will probably all tie back to what we've seen. Yeah, because I, mean, I just saw something looking at the IMDb where I'm like, huh, I kind of wish I hadn't seen yeah, that. I don't be looking <laughs> at the IMDb. What, what do y'all think so far? Final, like thoughts on one through three? I love it. Yeah, I love it. it yeah, at first I was like, slow burn. And I knew what, you know, I was like. See, I know I talked a lot about the pacing issues on Obi-Wan, but this, the, this slow burn worked for me because I thought the writing and the acting was just fantastic I, I thought three was fucking great so when you when you look at one through three all together and now i see why they released them all that way because it's a movie. If, if they released one as one people would have been like this is the most boring shit i've ever seen in my life mm-hmm. they'd say it exactly because like yeah. star wars fucking fans are the fucking worst the worst. worst nobody hates a star war more than a star more wars. than a star war fan oh boy so, but I, it was, I thought it was a smart move to do one through three at the same time because we, you would have probably lost some people after episode two, quite frankly. But I knew, like, I watched one and two, and then I was like, okay, well, no, three is going to be. And I watched one on its own, rocking. And I was like, hey, this is great. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying one was boring because you're trying to just establish some shit. But. I know how Star Wars fans be. Yeah, and they, they also say, they also haven't shoehorned in any like fan service. Like, look, right. there's a Wookiee. Like, I'm for right. none of that. Right for that. Yeah. Look, I love fan service. Yeah, I'm for it. But I like that they're like saying, "No, I ain't, I ain't doing that just yet." I also like the fact that this is produced on real sets and locations. Mm-hmm. Like, I I didn't realize how limiting working in the volume, like how that impacted the way the show was made yeah. the way the show felt not the way it was made the way it felt because yes it was it's phenomenal technology and that first season of the mandalorian i was just stunning and it's so cool to be able to see the actors inside the space with you know the, the vistas and the landscapes but 
there's just something about being on location and it looks good. It looks so good. Yeah. It's pretty cool that they got to do that. But they're fixing to be off that planet. So what are they doing next? <laughs> <laughs> they're going somewhere different, right? They're going At to, least Cassie they're going to Costco. I, I doubt they'll tell much more of a story on that planet. Nah. Oh, let's one one Unless thing that I would like further to say, and say what happened. I thought I thought the the sequence there at the end where where you know what's her face's boyfriend gave up Andor's location. Um, I thought that was incredibly well done and just so human, right? I mean, he's he's you know suspicious of his girlfriend. You know, he thinks she's fooling around with Cassian. You know, she's she is hiding something from him, but she's not being, you know, she's not cheating on him. And so he's he's all up in his fifis, just shit face drunk, you know, and I'll show him, right? And he calls it in, and then she shows up at the door and wants to be there with him. And and it's like it's been a long fucking day. And like, let's I just want to be with you. And I was like, the look on his face where he's like, Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought, and and I, honestly, I, I was hoping, but I was wrong because I looked it up. I was hoping the actor that plays that character reminded me of the actor who played the dude in the very beginning of Rogue One with the hurt arm that Cassian ends up shooting. And I, I for like the first episode, I was like, oh, this is that same dude. And like, he's going to end up being roped into it. But clearly that's not the case because he gets, he did. He gets killed. He killed he killed. Anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to that little piece, that little turn, because I was watching it and going, this is great. That's also the first time we've seen the bedroom in a Star War. So used intimately. Where do we go from here? What happens in the next episode? I guess if he's going with Luthen, like, is he going to take him to the rebels? Is it like, all right, now you're. Uh, I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so either. I think Luthen is going to, he's going to workshop him mm-hmm. it's going to be one-on-one he's going to develop him as an asset and not send him and on a not mission show him the side, inner workings he's working for. right he's not he's side going to be quest. super yeah, side quests yeah we're going to get some b stories yo <laughs> i enjoy it i'm excited um four is out as we record this um they haven't given us much more to go on. Did, I didn't stay through the whole credits. Did they do a little next week on? They didn't do it next week on, right? I don't watch the. If credits. they did, I didn't check. Yeah. Okay. That's how much of a Star War I am. <laughs> I like to go in fresh. <laughs> I like to so go a little fresh. housekeeping. How's the logo coming? Oh, it's great! God, you're gonna love it. It's you're great. Gonna love it's it. Great. It's great. It'll definitely be ready. <laughs> really soon. I love it. Yeah. So, did, is there anything else you guys want to say, or do you want to wrap this shit up? I'm a Star War. Um, I've checked my account several times since the first episode went live, and I am not rich. I am a Star War. I and I'm a Star War. <laughs> and we and we are a Star. We War. are a Star War. We are a Star War. Star Wars. We, we are a Star War. We are a Star War, isn't that cool?